بعد كده مرحبا بكم الناس الكل ويلكم تو دي اس اي زي مرحبا بك مدام سناء معنا ميرسي اللي قبلت لانفيتاسيون هذايا دونك السيشن نتاع اليوم باش تكون على الميثودولوجي اجيل والفريم ورك باش نحكيو عليها اليوم هي سكرام فريم ورك دو ديفلوبمون تاع الاخر دونك بالنسبه لي زيتوديون تاع باش نقراو في الدوزيام اني اللي في ليزي باش تعاونكم برشا في الخدمه بعد حسب ان عندنا سولوشن تشالنج اللي باش نخدموا فيها دي بروجي في السيمستر الجاي دونك اي واحد يحب يخدم في سولوشن تشالنج ولا دونك ما عليه كان يحضر البريزونتاسيون اليوم يتبع مليح يسال برشا اسئله دونك مدام سناء من المغرب دونك هي فول ستاك انجينير سكرام ماستر من سوفري كوم وكانت دونك وهي الى حد الان دونك تيم ادفايزر في دي اس سي اونسا في المغرب وايفنت اورجنايزر في جي دي جي كازابلانك دونك تفضل مدام Uh, for the presentation of today is going to be fully in English. Uh, due to the questions, if you have any remarks or questions or anything, we can do them in French, Arabic, English, anything you want, guys. So I guess we can head to the presentation. First, I'd like to, to thank the guys of DSC for inviting me and for giving me this, uh, this opportunity to be here with you guys. Well, and then I'm going to start the presentation. Well, as you see and as you already know, uh, today's presentation is going to be about uh, 30 to 40 minutes. We're going, we're going to be talking about Scrum. What is it? What are the principles of Scrum? What are the main things that we should know about Scrum? I'll give you uh, the definitions you need, guys, and I'll try to explain it to you so that it can be useful for your next projects or even uh, later in your jobs. Well, um, let's start. Uh, the agenda of the presentation is going to be uh, like this. First, we'll, we'll have to know what is Scrum. Then I'll be talking about uh, the Scrum framework. It's uh, uh, it's going to be a general view uh, of the Scrum, how does it work from the beginning to the end. And then we'll go through the Scrum values. What are the Scrum values? There are, uh, by the way, five values. We're going, about, we're going to talk about the roles, the main roles, the events, and the artifacts of the Scrum. Those are the main things that we show anything. It's uh, it's interactive actually. If you have any any questions or if you don't get anything, you can ask me in the middle of the presentation. Don't uh, wait until the end of the presentation. Well, uh, let's start this, guys. First, uh, what is Scrum? Uh, I don't know if any of you know about Scrum a little bit or nothing at all. It is a uh, project managing um, method, let's call it this way. Well, Scrum is, is a framework that helps teams to work together. Uh, like training for the big game, Scrum encourages teams to, uh, to learn through experiences, uh, self-organize while working on a problem and reflect on their wins and loses to uh, can Continuously improve. Uh, how do I reform this? It's like when we are uh, working on, on the problem or on the project, we learn at the same time and we improve ourselves through the losses and through the wins we had uh, in the development project. Well, why the sun? I'm talking about, I guess you all guys are, uh, are software development uh, students. Its principles are and not only or exclusively for the software and in any, any other thing than, than development soft, than software development. Well, this is one uh, of the reasons Scrum is so popular. Often though, the, uh, often though of uh, as an agile, agile project management framework, Scrum describes a set of meetings, uh, tools, roles, as I already said, that work in concert to help teams structure, uh, structure and manage their, their work. 
Well, during this presentation, I'll be talking about everything, the roles, the, the tools, the, the meetings, everything uh, you should know, guys, about, about this. Well, um, I guess you had a little bit uh, of what is Scrum. Let's go next to the Scrum framework. Well, guys, this is the Scrum framework. It's This is one iteration, actually. It's uh, one, how do I call it, a set. This is uh, something that it's done, and uh, when it ends, uh, we go through the whole process. First, we have a pro uh, product uh, backlog. I'll be I'll be explaining what is a product backlog later in the, pr in the presentation. Then we have a, uh, a sprint planning, which is an event. I'll be talking about all of this, guys. Don't uh, don't get confused. It's just a general view to know what we are going through. And then we are going, uh, after the sprint planning, which is an event, or uh, let's call it an appointment between between the team, we go through the sprint backlog. Uh, we define the sprint backlog, actually. And then we have the, the Scrum team working on the tasks on the sprint backlog. And then we have the increments. And then, then we have the sprint review, which is the last event in the the last event in the iteration or in the uh, how do I call it the scrum framework. And then we do the uh, sprint uh, retrospective and we go back to sp the sprint planning. That is pretty much the framework. Don't worry, guys, if you don't get it uh, since now, we are going to uh, go through every element in it and uh, try to understand it. Maybe in the end, I'll go back here and. Uh, uh, re-talk to you about what I have uh, just said and maybe you'll you'll understand it uh, even better well uh, the first thing the first thing to uh, to start with is the scrum values well what are the scrum values we have five values that we should respect if we are adopting the scrum method there is the uh, commitment the openness the focus the respect and the courage what does every uh, value uh, mean? Well, first we have the Scrum team that commits to achieving its goals and to supporting each other. This is the commitment, the commitment value. Next, we have uh, the primary focus of the team is on the work of the sprint to make the best possible progress toward these goals. Well, this is the focus value. If you guys hear um, keywords like sprint or anything like this, don't worry, we'll be, we'll be talking about each one of them. Next, we have the Scrum team. Uh, the Scrum team and the stakeholders also that are open about the work and the challenges. Uh, this is about the openness. This is a value in the, in the Scrum process also. And then we have the Scrum team members that should, uh, of course, respect each, each other to be capable, independent people, and are respected as such by the people uh, with whom they work. This is about the uh, respect value. The last value uh, is the courage. The, the Scrum team members have the courage to do the right thing, uh, to work on tough problems. Well, a, a member in a Scrum team should actually respect the five values of the Scrum. Let's go through them all over again. There is the commitment. Each one of the team should commit to achieve the goals that, ha that has been uh, made in the first place. We have the openness. Everyone should be open, the Scrum team and the stakeholders. We have the focus on the goal and we have the respect. We should respect each other and we should be, uh, how do I say it? We should be, um, uh, we should think and uh, be um, convinced that the others are really self-sufficient and no one needs the other. Uh, everyone of the team should be um, independent on his work. Of course, we'll be, we'll be working as a team, but everyone should, uh, should uh, how do I say this, uh, should be in independent and do tasks uh, without needing the help uh, of the others all the time. Well, those guys were the values of the Scrum. And next, let's see what is the Scrum team. I've been talking about Scrum team, the guys of the, the Scrum team, the, the members, etc. Well, the fundamental unit of the Scrum is a small team of people, uh, which is the Scrum team. Well, the Scrum team consists of one Scrum master, uh, one, 
Je ne sais pas où c'est arrêté. Est-ce que c'est à quel niveau normalement on est sur le uh, Scrum Team? We talked about the Scrum, the scrum Team. Ok, ok, I'll go back there. Uh, you can see, you can see the. Uh, c'est bon, madame. Ah, super, super. Alors, on reprend. Where was I? I was on the Scrum Team. Well, I was saying that typically a Scrum Team is uh, 10 or fewer people. In general, it was found that uh, smaller uh, teams communicate better and are more uh, productive. Okay, guys? So, the Scrum Team also is, uh, is responsible for all product-related activities from the stakeholders' uh, collaboration. Uh, verification, maintenance, operation, and experimentation. Uh, and also the research and development and anything else that might be required in the, um, in the project development. So everything that should be done on the project, it's the, the Scrum team who, who, who does it. No one out of, the, out of the, the entity. Okay, guys? So, as I said before, the Scrum team requires three, three elements which are the, the Scrum Master, uh, the Product Owner, and the Developer. And the Developers. I'll be going through every one of them and uh, telling you uh, which, uh, which is the role of every one of them. Okay, guys? So, uh, let's start with the Developers. Uh, the Developers are, uh, of course, the people in the Scrum team that are committed to uh, creating any aspect of a usable increment each sprint. So, uh, the developers are, are really the people who executes or who develops the project. Uh, the specific skills needed by the developers are often actually broad and uh, will vary with the domain of work. If it's a development, uh, uh, computer software development or something like this. Uh, for example, if it uh, should be done in Java, we need developers that uh, that uh, that can do Java in a, and the frameworks of Java, etc. It's uh, it's basically this. Uh, but still, the developers are always accountable for other other skills like uh, creating a plan for the sprint, which is the sprint backlog. We'll go through this also. So it's the developers who should do this, to create the plan for the sprint. The sprint is the iteration or the, how do we call it, the step in the Scrum process. Also, they should be in styling quality by adhering to a definition of done, uh, adapting their plan each, uh, each day toward the, the sprint goal, and also holding each other accountable as professionals. Uh, if you see keywords here that you don't get, guys, we'll go through anything. Don't, don't you worry. So that was uh, for the developers. Uh, how do we choose them and uh, what should they know and what should they do in the, in the process? So I'll go through them again. First, they should be creating the plan or the, or the sprint backlog. Then they should be uh, installing quality by adding to a definition of that. Then adapting their plan each day, every day, uh, toward the sprint goal. And uh, finally, uh, they should hold each other accountable as professionals. Uh, or in, a, in another expression, they should work as a team. And next, we have the product owner. Well, actually, the product owner uh, is one person. It's not a committee, it's just one person. That may represent the needs of many stakeholders in the products backlog. The product owner, actually, guys, is the the person which which uh, which uh, takes the um, the client uh, needs and uh, make them uh, into tasks, if you want, if you want to, to to say it that way, and make tasks for the for the developers or or for the scrum team. 
Well, those wanting to change the products backlog can do so only by, by trying to convince the, the products owner. Well, the products owner is accountable for maximizing the value of the product resulting from the work of the Scrum team. How this is done may uh, vary widely, actually, across organizations or, or, or the Scrum teams or uh, even individuals. Also, uh, the product owner is accountable for effective product backlog management. Well, uh, it's his responsibility that the management of the product backlog goes, uh, goes very well, which uh, actually includes uh, developing and, explic and ex explicitly communicating the product's goal. Well, the product managers, and the product, uh, sorry, the product owner, it takes the, the, the need from, from the client and it should uh, communicate it so that the developers get what they should do. Next, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, creating, uh, creating and clearly communicating the product backlog items. Uh, each item in the product backlog should be clearly be communicated to the team. Also, there is ordering products backlog items. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, when the team are done with what they already are, he should be asking the clients for for more uh, for more items or for more uh, how do we call them products backlog items to add to the products backlog. Uh, and uh, finally, he should be ensuring that the products backlog is transparent, visible, and understood by everyone in the Scrum team. Uh, the product owner uh, may also do the above work or may delegate the responsibility to others. But still, even if he delegates the responsibility to others, he remains accountable. It's his responsibility. If uh, the person who has been, who the work has been delegated to didn't do it well, it's on his responsibility. Well, for uh, the product owners to succeed, guys, the entire organization must respect their decisions. He really has a kind of a powerful world inside the, the Scrum team. Well, these decisions are visible in the content and ordering uh, of the product pack and through uh, the inspectable increment at the sprint review. Sprint review, uh, products backlog, uh, everything uh, will be uh, explain the further in the pre presentation guide. Well, that was the product owner. If you want to do a resume of what is or who is the, the product owner, first, uh, as I said, it's just one person. It's not a committee. Uh, what one person, we can call it, um, how do I call it? C'est l'intermédiaire entre le client et les développeurs. C'est comme ça. Il prend, uh, il prend le besoin des clients et ils le traduisent euh, sous forme d'une liste de, de tâches pour que les développeurs peuvent, euh, peuvent les exécuter. C'est ça, le product owner. Ensuite, euh, we have talked about the, the developers, the product owner, and we have the Scrum Master. The Scrum Master, guys, is accountable for establishing, establishing Scrum as defined in the Scrum Guide. If uh, a Scrum team is adopting a uh, the Scrum for, for for as a project uh, managing method, they really should respect the Scrum the Scrum guides. Well, the Scrum master is the person who is accountable to to uh, to establish the Scrum as it is defined. Uh, they do this by uh, helping everyone understand Scrum theory and practice both within the Scrum team and the, organ the organization. Well, also the Scrum Master is uh, accountable for the Scrum team's effectiveness. Not only they should uh, respect the, the Scrum as it is defined, but they also should be effective. They do this by enabling the Scrum team to improve its practices within the Scrum framework, uh, of course, that we have seen uh, earlier in the uh, in the beginning of the presentation well uh, also guys the scrum masters are true leaders a scrum master should be a good leader who serves the scrum team and the larger org organization not all only the, the scrum team it serves the scrum team in several ways actually including uh, coaching the team members he the scrum master 
master should really coach the team members in self-management and the cross-functionality. He should help the Scrum team focus on creating high-value increments that meet the definition of done. We'll be talking about definition of done also later. Uh, he should also cause the removal of in, in impediments of the Scrum team's prog progress if they have anything that blocks the, the, the progress or, or the process of, of the Scrum or anything like this, he should be removing them or at least helping the, the team to remove them. And then uh, he also ensures that all Scrum events take place and are positive, productive and kept within the time box. Because believe me, by experience, if uh, we are working on some projects and we have a lot of work to do, for example, uh, we, have, uh, we, have, uh, we have finished the sprint and we have finished the sprint review. So, so there is a retrospective that should be done. At the, uh, the end of the sprint, everyone is tired. Everyone is, uh, is really uh, like, oof, the sprint has finished. No one wants to do a retrospect. Well, this is the, the role of the Scrum Master. He should uh, ensure that all the events take place and uh, they uh, actually should take place and be uh, productive, not only take place and be uh, useless. Well, that was how the, the Scrum Master could serve the Scrum team or the developers. Uh, next, the Scrum Master also serves the product owner like backlog managers. Need for he should meet the need, but uh, the scrum master should help the team understand this also. Uh, should be also helping establish imper in imperial products planning for a complex for a complex environment, and also. He should facilitate facilitate the stakeholders' collaboration as requested or needed. Well, the product owner is, is actually the one who should be communicating with the stakeholders, but the scrum master should facilitate the process. As we as we uh, notice, guys, the scrum master gets involved into every single process uh, in the in the scrum method. Last. The Scrum Master doesn't only uh, serve the Scrum team or the product owner, he, he also serves the, the organization, the whole organization, by leading, by training and coaching the organization and its Scrum adoption, by planning also and advising Scrum implementations within the organization, and the stakeholders themselves, and the synapse and Approach for company work. As I uh, already said by removing uh, barriers between stakeholders and the scrum team. Well, um, if we want to resume the the role of the scrum master he, uh, in the scrum team to facilitate and to uh, make sure that everything is going well during the project development. Well, those guys were the three uh, main roles in the uh, Scrum team. Next, we'll be talking about the Scrum events. We have seen the framework. We have seen uh, what are the values of the Scrum. We have seen what are the roles or uh, the elements of the Scrum team. And now we'll be talking about the Scrum events. The Scrum events, or as we call them in French, les cérémonies. Uh, sorry. Well, there are actually uh, several Scrum events. Uh, the first and the most important is the sprint. The, sh the sprint actually, guys, is uh, a fixed length event of one month or less. Some, some teams, they do two weeks. Some teams, they do three weeks. Uh, it is uh, 
and then fixed it should be this this time two weeks sprint and next time we'll do three weeks sprint and uh, the next time after that will be doing a one month sprint this is not how it works it should be a fixed length it depends on the nature of the project on the how many people are there on the team and other things like this so uh, a new sprint all always starts immediately after the conclusion of the previous sprint so there there always is a sprint the one sprint begins it ends the the next sprint begins it ends there is no blank between the sprints well all the work necessarily uh, to achieve the product goal guys including the sprint planning daily scrum sprint review and sprint retrospective happen within the sprints uh, what I have been saying now are the other ceremonies or the other events. Everything it happens during the sprint. Okay, guys. Uh, so uh, when uh, ever the sprint begins, there are no changes that could be made to endanger the sprint goal. When the sprint is uh, has begun, there is a sprint goal fixed. So we should be working to achieve that sprint goal. We cannot do any changes on the plan uh, in the middle of, uh, of a sprint. Next, uh, also during the sprint, we cannot uh, decrease quality. Quality of work should always be increasing. Uh, also, the product backlog is refined as needed. And uh, the scope may be clarified and renegotiated with the product owner as more is learned so the the tasks are, are are put on the beginning of the of the sprint but the developers uh, actually get to know what sh they should do when they begin to work on the tasks so they communicate with the product owner and they renegotiate really things with him uh, for example the some tasks is put we should build this uh, or we should add this feature to the website something like this the, dev the developers say, okay, we'll do it um, during this sprint. Let's put it as a sprint goal. But once the developers uh, start to work on this feature, they find out that there are a lot of complexity on this feature. For example, the framework they are working with or the library or whatever should be, sh should be how do I say it, should be studied more. They maybe they need more time. They have the right to renegotiate things with the product owner and maybe change the sprint goal. Well, uh, the sprints enable predictably by uh, ensuring inspection and adaptation for progress toward a sprint a product goal, not a sprint goal. At least every calendar month, when a sprint horizon is too long, the sprint goal may become invalid. Uh, that's why I said that it should not be too long. Complexity may rise and risk may increase. Well, shorter sprints can be employed to generate more learning cycles and limit risk, of course, and, uh, and also effort to a smaller time frame. Each sprint may be actually considered a short project. Uh, well, actually, that's, that's, the, um, that's the principle of the whole Scrum thing. We take a large project and we divide it into a lot of, uh, uh, how do we call them, a lot of shorts, or a lot of tiny projects. And we try to accomplish every project uh, during the sprint. If we, if we add a future, we consider this like a tiny project and we consider it as the sprint goal and we try to execute it in, in the, um, or during the sprint. Well, that, guys, was the definition or, I don't know, a little talking about how, what is the sprint. And as I said, the sprint is really the most important event uh, in the whole process. Well, that does, uh, this does not mean that the other events are not important. Each event is important, but everything happens during the sprint. Next, we'll be talking about the sprint planning. Well, the sprint planning is uh, actually the first event in the in the sprint. It initiates 
the sprints by laying on by laying out the work to be performed for the sprint. This resulting plan is created by the collaborative work of the entire uh, the entire scrum team. Uh, first, the, there is the product owner that ensures that attendees are prepared to discuss the most important back, uh, product backlog items and how they map to the product goal. The scrum team may also invite other people to attend the sprint planning to provide advice or something like this. Uh, well, in the, the sprint planning, uh, uh, there are uh, some topics that should be uh, topics or let's call them questions that should be answered. The first, like on the slide, is why is this sprint valuable? Well, the product owner proposes how the product could increase its value and utility in the current sprint. As, as I said, we want to add feature X and we want to add feature Y. And uh, Y. <laughs> well, that is uh, how the project is going to be increased. The whole Scrum team collaborates to define a sprint goal that communicates with the sprint is valuable to stakeholders. Well, the sprint goal must be finali finalized prior to the end of of the sprint planning. Well, that was about the first question, guys. Next, the second topic is what can be done in this sprint? Yes, we want some features, but what can we do as developers? What can we accomplish during this sprint? Well, uh, through discussion with the product owner, the developers select items from the product backlog to include in the current sprint. Well, the Scrum team may refine these items during the process, uh, the process of the, the, the sprint planning, of course, which increases understanding and confidence between, between each other. Well, uh, selecting how much can be completed within, within a sprint may be challenging, actually. However, uh, the more the developers know about their past performances, the, the upcoming capacity, and uh, their definition of them. Uh, the more confident they will be in the in their sprint uh, forecasts. Okay, guys. Well, this is uh, what can be done in uh, the current sprint or the sprint we are planning for. The last topic, guys, is how will the chosen work get done? Okay, uh, we know how. We know what what is the sprint. Uh, what makes the sprint valuable? We know what can we done in this sprint. Well, how will we do it now? Uh, for each selected products backlog item, the developers plan the work necessary to create an increment that meets the definition of them. Uh, as I said, Guy, I'll be talking about what is increment and what is definition of them. Uh, this is often done by decomposing products backlog items into smaller work items uh of one day or less okay well how this is done is at this at the sole uh, destruction of the developers no one else tells them how to turn products backlog items into increments or values developers now know how to do this well the sprint go uh this the products backlog items selected for the sprint plus the plan for delivering them uh, are together referred to as the sprint backlog. Okay, guys? Well, the sprint planning is time boxed to a maximum of eight hours. This is if if we have a one, one month uh, spring for shorter springs, the event is usually shorter. I know some examples we do like uh, three hours for a three weeks uh, sprint. And three hours is uh, is uh, is really is really enough to discuss uh, the sprint background. Uh, this okay, 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 okay. This was the sprint planning, guys. Next, we have the daily scrum or the daily meetings. Well, the purpose of the daily scrum is to inspect progress toward the sprint goal and adapt the sprint backlog as necessary adjusting the upcoming planned work. 
well uh, the daily scrum guys or the daily meeting is a 15 minutes event well it should be done every day as it names refer we go we gather the product owner the the developers we talk about where we are each one uh, should uh, tell us what has he done yesterday for example and what he's planning to do today and if ever he has some something to share with us or he uh, might need help or something it's in the daily meeting when, uh, where uh, this should be uh, told well uh, all of this is to reduce complexity it is held at the same time and place every working day of the sprint okay if the product owner or scrum master are actively working on items in the sprint backlog they participate as developers also not only as scrum master or product owner and in the most of the cases it's uh, it's what it is uh, everyone participates as, as a developer even the um, the product owner he he speaks or he talks about he, what he's been doing during the past uh, 24 hours well, uh, the developers can select whatever structure and technique they want, actually, as long as the daily scrum focuses on progress toward the sprint, uh, toward the sprint goal, and produces an actionable plan uh, for the next day of work. Uh, this creates focus and improves uh, self-management for, uh, for the for the team. Well, uh, daily scrums improve communication. Uh, they uh, identify impediments, as I said, or complexities. They promote quick decision making and consequently eliminate the need for. You are back, Senate. Yes, uh, when were I gone? <laughs> Internet. No, not internet. Uh, uh, Where was I, uh, guys? I mean, really? L'importance de faire un hit de 15 minutes chaque jour entre les développeurs. Ah, d'accord. Alors, on était sur le daily. OK. Yep. Je vais venir sur le daily. Je vais juste... Je suis vraiment désolée. OK. Je reviens. Vous voyez le partage bon. C'est bon Désolé, mais j'ai entendu. C'est bon ici euh, euh, C'est bon, madame, on peut voir le partage. D'accord, merci. Je vais, euh, je, vais, je vais continuer. Je vais reprendre depuis le daily. Je ne sais pas qu ce que j'étais en train de dire. Well, as I said, I said that the daily scrum, uh, what does the daily mission do to us? Yes, it actually improves communications, as I said. It, uh, it identifies the impediments or the, the blockage. It promotes only the quick deci decision making and consequently eliminates the need uh, for other meetings. And as I already said, uh, this, the daily scrum is not the only time developers are allowed to adjust their plans or to talk about things. They often meet throughout the day for more detailed discussions about adapting or replanning the rest of the sprint work. But all of those are really informal and um, not official uh, meetings uh, and it doesn't it does not it has nothing to do with this crowd okay so this guys was about the daily meeting next as i as i was talking about, uh, there is the sprint review well the purpose of the sprint is to inspect the outcome of the sprint and determine future adaptations uh, the Scrum team presents the results of their work to the to the key stakeholders and progress toward the product's goal is discussed. So during this event, 
the scrum team and stakeholders review what was accomplished in the sprint and what has and what has changed in their environment. Based on this information, the attendees collaborate uh, on what to do next. Uh, the product backlog may also be adjusted to meet new event. The sprint review is a working information. Uh, the sprint review actually it's not only a, a presentation okay it's a working session uh, and the scrum team should avoid limiting it to only uh, their work uh, mostly the sprint review is uh, the second to last event of the sprint it's uh, normally it's the last thing we do we show to the stakeholders what we done uh, the goal and here's what we done have we attended the sprint goal have we honored our promises etc etc okay uh, well uh, one last thing about the sprint review it's that it is time box to a maximum of four hours for a one month sprint this is what it is time box to okay so normally it is really shorter than that for a three week um, for a three week sprint it is one hour or one hour and a half maximum okay guys well next and uh, we can consider this the last event or the last ceremony of the sprint it is the sprint retrospective the sprint retrospective it has the purpose which is to plan ways to increase quality and effectiveness well we have we have uh, we have done our sprint we have done our work we have we have showed it to the stakeholders everyone has uh, showed us what has what what he has done during the sprint but is everyone happy uh, does everyone want to improve anything do we have suggestions do you have uh, i don't know complaints do you want to complain about something all of this we do it in the uh, retrospective uh, meeting actually I've been talking about learning things and that the scrum is uh, one method well where, where we learn from our low losses and uh, our wins it's in the retrospective that we define those losses and those wins well the scrum team inspects how the last sprint went uh, with the regards to individuals interactions processes tools and their definition of them okay inspected elements often vary with the domain of work and assumptions that led them astray are uh, identified and their origins explored well the, scr the scrum team what what does they do they discuss what went well during the sprint uh, also what uh, problems it's uh, encountered and how those problems were or they might be sol solved or uh, I don't know they they give uh, their their propositions so the three main things that we talk about them in the retrospective is what really what we liked about the sprint if uh, we like something we point on it on the retrospective so that we keep doing it and then if we don't like something we point on it so we stop uh, doing it <coughs> I'm sorry and then we identify the problems and we see if they were solved we we see how they were solved so that we can learn about about that and if they are not solved we think of a way to solve them okay guys so the scrum team identifies the most uh, helpful changes to improve the effectiveness of the team so the most uh, Im impactful improvements are addressed as soon as possible, okay? They may even be added uh, to the sprint backlog for the, the next sprint, and I have seen this actually happening in, in many occasions. Uh, sometimes we, we just uh, identify a problem and uh, we find a solution. But sometimes the solution needs, needs to be, I don't know, to develop something uh, to avoid that this problem occurs so we take this um, this task of development and we add it to the next sprint backlog okay guy guys
the also the spring uh, retrospective uh, concludes the spring it's the very last thing that is done in the spring if today <coughs> is a friday and we have a retrospective monday we will be having the next uh, sprint beginning with the sprint planning okay so uh, the retrospectives actually they are a time box to a maximum of three hours for one month sprint uh, for shorter sprints the event is usually shorter well it's uh, it is a meeting that that uh, gets, uh, needs to be um, giving everyone the, the opportunity to talk. And sometimes there are some, um, how do we call them, icebreakers in the retrospective, uh, like some games or things, so that the team gets used to each other. So usually the retrospective are a bit longer than the other events. They take uh, most likely three to three to four hours. It's even for a uh, three-week uh, sprint. Okay, guys. Uh, I I think we have talked about the all the main events. We have been talking about the sprint, the sprint planning, the daily meeting, the review, the retrospective. Next, guys, we'll be talking about the last thing in that we should know in the in the scrum. It's not the least important, but we, it is the last thing we are going to be talking about today. It is actually the Scrum Artifacts. Okay, so uh, the Scrum Artifacts, actually, they, re they represent the work or the, or the value. They are designed to maximize the transparency or, uh, or uh, how do we call it, the key information, okay? Thus, uh, everyone inspecting them has the same basis of adaptation. <coughs> so, guys, each artifact contains a commitment to ensure it uh, provides information that enhances the transparency and focus against which progress can be measured, okay? Well, there are actually three artifacts. They are there are the products backlog, the sprint backlog, and the increment. And each of them, it has a commitment to ensure that it has been done well or uh, that uh, the transparency has been enhanced well. Okay. So for the product backlog, we have the product goal. If we, if the product goal is honored, so the the commitment has been done well. Okay. For the sprint backlog, there is the sprint goal. And for the increments or the user stories, there is the definition of them. We'll be talking about each of them and we'll try to explain uh, every, every one, each one of them. I'm sorry, as it should be explained. Uh, first, as I said, and it's uh, the biggest um, frame of the thing, the whole thing, there is the product. So now, can you see my screen? Hello? Yes. Oh, good. Uh, we were on the products backlog. If you are interested to have research, five course, blah, blah, blah. Oh, but, uh... <sighs> okay, so I'm going to... It's back from here, okay, guys? Uh... And if you don't hear me well or anything, just uh, tell me, okay? I'll try to fix things. Uh, okay. As I said, the first Scrum artifact is the product backlog, and it is the emergent order list of what is needed to improve the products. It is the single uh, source of work uh, undertaken by the Scrum team, okay? So the product backlog is a huge list of what should be done during the whole process of the project development. Okay, guys, uh, the backlog items that can be done by the Scrum team within one sprint are deemed ready for selection in the sprint planning event, okay? They usually acquire this degree of transparency after refining activities by, by the Scrum team in the, in, the, in the sprint planning. So the product backlog 
refinement is the act of breaking down and further defining products backlog items into smaller precise items okay so a products backlog item one item can be a huge thing to be done so we take those items and we uh, and we uh, we have to we define them into smaller more precise items okay guys so this is an uh, ongoing activity to add details such uh, as um, description as the order and the size of the of the task so the attributes often vary with the with the, the domain of work okay guys so there are the developers who will be doing the work as responsible for the sizing well uh, uh, it's normal because the developers are the ones who are going to be um, executing or making the 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 task happen so they have the right to size it but they do size it on the uh, beginning of the sprint or in the sprint planning okay uh, the products owner uh, owner may influence the developers by helping them understand and select trade-offs that's uh, his only work in this uh, process so uh, for example uh, the product owner adds some um, future he wants as a as an item a list item in the products backlog he wants it to be done uh, it's the developer who who tells him uh, how much time uh, it needs to be done okay so uh, you need to add this button i'll need one day to do it that's the thing pretty much well uh, let's resume a little bit what is a products backlog guys it's the list of the items that could be done to improve the product okay and it's uh, most from the most important to the least important. Uh, next. Oh, okay. I should have uh, removed that. I just here added the product goal. As I said, every uh, artifact in the, in the Scrum has a commitment. So the product backlog has the product goal as a commitment. Uh, the product goal describes the future stage of the product uh, it's like we want to add a feature to the to this website the product goal is the website having the future the feature and it's working and it's deployed that's the product goal for example okay so it uh, describes a future state of the product which can serve as a target for the scrum team to plan against okay so the product goal is uh, the product backlog. It's in the product backlog. So the rest of the product backlog emerges to define will fulfill the product goal. Okay, guys. Uh, so uh, as I said, the commitment for the product backlog is the product goal. Next, the next artifact is the sprint backlog. So the sprint backlog is composed of the sprint goal. Is it's the the why, and the sets of products backlog items selected from for the sprint. We have a, a large backlog for the whole product, which is the products backlog. For example, we have uh, one hundred um, features that uh, needs to be done and bug fixes, etc. And we have uh, we have we are going to start a sprint of three weeks. We are, for example, this is only for uh, an example. This is not a rule. We are going to take five features to do in this uh, in this next sprint. This, hi guys, have you lost me for a while? For a while. Uh, just, uh, maybe not a minute, 30 seconds. D'accord. Alors, uh, I'm going to continue. As I raise the sprint backlog, which is a portion of the last one. Uh, well, the sprint backlog actually is a plan. No, no, don't and, uh, I don't say on the presentation. Oh, uh, I, I haven't <laughs> shared. I thought it was. Uh... <coughs> While it's coming, I'll, I'll keep talking about the product backlog. Or on the sprint backlog, sorry. 
Uh, you please tell me when it's uh, okay. Well, as I'm saying the sprint backlog is and, um, it's for the developers. It is uh, highly visible. It's all uh, always it should be somewhere who everyone can access, it. and it's uh, a real time picture of the work that the developers plan to accomplish during the sprint. Okay, in order to achieve the 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 big uh, sprint goal, you can see the presentation. Can you? No, no, Madison. Okay. I just don't want you to lose focus. It's okay now, guys. No, not yet. Okay. 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 Uh, we see. Okay, uh, and uh, like the products backlog has the products goal as a commitment, the sprint backlog it has the sprint goal. So we take those few tasks that we have uh, agreed to do during this uh, sprint, and we we put a single uh, objective for the sprint is to do them. So. That is the sprint goal, okay? Although the sprint goal is a commitment by the developers, it provides flexibility. It's not always uh, something uh, that is um, fixed or fijé. It's be flexible. That is what the Scrum about, okay, guys? So in terms of the exact work needed to achieve it, uh, the sprint goal also creates coherence and focus encouraging the, the scrum team to work together rather than on separate initiatives okay uh, so for example we need to add a feature and it's a huge feature it can be done by one developer two or three developers can work on it but they should um, they should uh, divide the work between them in a in a uh, coherence, okay, and they should the first to get to one, one to one goal. N we can't let everyone or any one of them uh, just work like this without a uh, without a guidance. Well, that is the the, the commitment of the, the sprint battle. Well, actually, it's all, it also is uh, created during uh, it's during planning when we call the spring. Uh, it's at the range backlog. Well, at this point, they keep the in mind. Uh, if the work turns out to be different than they expected in the sprint planning, they collaborate with the product owner to negotiate. Here, where comes the renegotiation of talked about uh, earlier they renegotiate the scope of the sprint backlog within the sprint without affecting the sprint goal okay <coughs> well the last artifacts guys is the increments we've been talking about the products backlog the sprint backlog and now we are talking about the uh, the, the increment or the how uh, i don't know if some others uh, call us user stories. They are a concrete stepping stone toward the product goal. Okay, each increment is uh, additive to all prior increments and uh, uh, and uh, thoroughly verified. Okay, guys. So ensuring that all the increments are working together in order to provide value, uh, the increments must be really usable. So the multiple increments may, may be created within a sprint. Uh, I mean during the sprint. So the sum of the increments is presented as the sprint review, the supporting uh, empiricism. So however, uh, an increment may be delivered to stakeholders prior to the end of the sprint. Uh, only one increment, increment and not uh, multiple increments. So the sprint review should never be considered a gate to releasing value, okay? 
uh, work can no, uh, cannot be considered part of an increment unless it meets the definition of done. Well, the definition of done, guys, is the commitment of the increment. How can we know that this increment has been done? We define uh, in the sprint planning what is the definition of done of this increment. For example, uh, the, the increment is to add some button to the website. The definition of done is to have the button on the website and it uh, takes you to some other uh, link. Okay, well, the definition of done is a formal description of the state of the increment when it meets the quality measures required for the project. That's def the definition I have put on the slides. But the moment a product backlog item meets the definition of done, an increment is born. Okay, it's like uh, an increment. So the definition of done creates tr transparency by providing everyone a shared understanding of what work was completed as part of the uh, increment, okay? If a product's backlog item does not meet the definition of them, it cannot be released. So uh, it, it, uh, sometimes it can not even be presented at the sprint uh, review. Instead, it returns to the product's backlog for future consideration. It's not considered as done, so it's still on the backlog and it still needs to be done. Okay, discussed and then done. So if the definition of done for an increment is part of standards of the organization, or uh, the, the Scrum team must follow it as a minimum, okay? Uh, if it is not an organizational standard, the Scrum team must create a definition of done uh, appropriate for, for the product, and the Scrum team may do this. So the developers are always required to conform to definition of them. Okay, well, it's like how do I do I call this? It's like the um, the measure the measurement tool. So if there are multiple Scrum teams working together on a product, maybe they must mutually define and comply with the same definition of them. So I guess uh, we have been through them all, the increment and the product backlog. I guess, guys, that I have been through the main aspects of the uh, of the Scrum process. I think for, for, uh, for, for, I don't know, si vous suivez. And uh, you are welcome. To ask me anything and to mm, ask, maybe give me a remark or you have something or to add or anything. Was this? Madame, I think there are no questions. Si non, Madame Sané, c'était vraiment un plaisir d'être avec nous. Ah, merci à vous, Madame. Et sans importance uh, pour travailler en équipe. Uh, and uh, we hope that we can collaborate again in another session or project. Uh, and if... Oh, of course. I'll be glad. I'll, I'll be really honored. Thank you guys for, for being such here and patient with my here. The connection, dear Lilim Zefsa. Shukran Bizef. On va up, uh, upload this session à la chaîne YouTube. Uh, و البارتي نتاع الريبتور تاع الكونيكت شنا باش نحيوها اوكي ميرسي بوكو دغيا اي جو فو سونفوا لو ليان ا غسان دي كي فا ترافايي با فو في ماجوتي سور لينكدين سي فو زافي دوتر كيسيون جو سي با سي فو ترافايي سور دي بروجي جو بو فو دون اون بوتيت غايدنس ميم سي سي فريمون هامبل سكو جو في مي بوكوا با Merci. Ok. Sinon, merci beaucoup, mmh, les gars. Bonne soirée. Au revoir, accueil, d'accord. Et euh, je crois que je peux juste quitter et vous libérer. <rire> merci. Euh, sinon, <rire> si vous êtes en train d'avoir un compte euh, pour faire, vous pouvez le faire.